Hi everybody, welcome to Sam's Doing Stuff. What am I doing today? Well, I'm starting a series I've wanted to start for a long time, and this time of year is the perfect time to do it because we're gonna get about 10 straight days of rain. So, BX Basics, yeah. We're gonna answer some basic questions, like why to buy a BX. Uh, we're gonna go over some of the functions and features and basic operations. And at the end of this video, I'm gonna tell you the very first implement you should buy before you start operating your BX. Let's get started. So why buy a Kubota BX? This is one of the smallest subcompact tractors you can find. They have a BX 1880, which is a little bit smaller than this one. This is the 2380, and then they sell a 2680, which gives you, of course, three extra horsepower. Well, the answer to that question is because of its size. It is small. And let me tell you, when I bought this tractor, we owned a three acre property and I had a two and a half car garage. Well, that half car garage space was just the right amount of space to park this tractor. And if I'd bought anything any bigger, it wouldn't have fit. So that's a very big consideration. This tractor can get into places that other tractors can't and do work where other tractors just can't go. So the size of this tractor is a big plus, even though you think a small tractor, well, everybody keeps telling me, find out what you need and buy a size bigger. Well, what you need might be a smaller tractor. So that's number one. Number two is resale value. The Kubota BX and the Kubota line of tractors have a fantastic resale value. And if you decide to step up, like we move to a bigger property, and sometimes I think I might need a bigger machine, and you decide to sell the Kubota BX, you're gonna get quite a bit of money back from your purchase. It does have a very good resale value. Another big reason to buy a Kubota BX is they offer an SSQA system for their front loader. That's right, SSQA, that stands for Skid Steer Quick Attach, and that's pretty much a universal system for detaching and attaching different implements to your front end loader. Now, there are other systems out there that are proprietary to their brand, and if you do that, well, you're stuck buying what they sell. You also cannot borrow implements or attachments for your front loader from other people or rent them. You have to stick with their brand of implements, and I think that's extremely limiting, and it's why I went with a Kubota BX. A big consideration in what type of tractor you buy is dealer support. What dealer do you have nearby? Okay, I had a Kubota dealer within 15 miles, very easy to get to, and I get great dealer support for maintenance and for buying parts, and if I have any questions, I can always call them and count on them. So find a dealer that's close to you and that will take care of you. That's a huge part of buying a new machine. Another feature of the Kubota BX that I did not even realize before I bought it, and I'm so glad that it has it, is dual function on the front loader. Now you say dual function, well, yeah, it goes up and down and it dumps and curls, right? Well, I'm talking about dual function at the same time. That's right, you can lift the loader and you can dump at the same time and you can curl it back and lower it. It all works together. You can push that stick into a 45 degree and it will operate both functions at the same time. Well, doesn't every tractor do that? No, not every tractor has that type of function. And let me tell you, when you get into using this tractor and you get proficient with it, you're gonna be really thankful that you've got that capability. Now, like I mentioned before, this is a BX2380. I bought this in 2018, and this is pretty much the exact configuration that most people will buy their tractor. It will have a mid-mount mower because you wanna be able to mow your yard, and it'll have a front loader because you wanna be able to clear snow, move dirt, move gravel, move mulch, you know, all kinds of stuff. Now, there are some features on my Kubota that I've added that I can't take off right now, and I'll tell you what they are. I added a tooth bar. This is a Piranha tooth bar from Be Expanded. You're gonna need to uh, write that website down because they have some fantastic products that you may wanna purchase. 
I added a Land Pride third function valve. That adds a third function to my loader stick. So these two buttons will allow you to do a third function such as open and close a grapple. I also added work lights, a toolbox, and I keep a first aid kit hanging from the ROPS just in case. Now I just said the word ROPS, okay? ROPS, R-O-P-S, Rollover Protection System. You might see that somewhere and wonder what it is. There you go. And it's exactly what it sounds like. It is a protection system that will prevent the tractor from seriously injuring you or killing you if it rolls over. And it is a very dangerous situation. The rule of thumb with the ROPS is if you have it fully extended or in the upright position, you should wear your seatbelt. If you have this folded down, which I'll show you in a second, then you should not wear your seatbelt because if the tractor rolls, you wanna be able to jump off and get out of the way. Now, I'll show you how to lower the ROPS and the only reason I can think of to lower this ROPS is if you need to get underneath something, okay? Maybe if you're mowing and you're going under tree branches, especially if you need to put this in a standard garage. If you're going into a standard garage, this is about three inches too high and you will hit the top of your garage door. So be warned, if you're gonna store this in a regular garage, make sure you learn how to put the ROPS down. I'll show you how to do it. There are two pins, one on either side. You're gonna take out these cotter pins. They come out very simply. And you're gonna pull the pin. Now it's wired to the ROPS. When you pull the pin, there's an extra set of holes here. Put it back in there and put your cotter key back in. I'll show you why in a second. Let's do this other side. I should mention also, I added a safety light. It's right here. Just for when I'm next to the street. That does not come with the Kubota BX. So let's get this ROPS folded down. After you've pulled those pins and got them stowed in this back position, just grab the top of it, yank it back, and it'll fold back. And the reason I tell you to put those pins in there is now it'll rest right there. So you got your ROPS nice and low, and it still adds some protection, but it's not folded all the way down and hitting the back of your tractor. Putting it back up, just the opposite. Now on the front of the ROPS are these two knobs here. What in the world do they do? Well, it just is something that you can just tighten down a little bit when the ROPS is up, just until it's snug, and that keeps things from rattling around. So yeah, just go ahead and tighten each one down. There you go, and just to reiterate, the ROPS is for safety, and I know of people that have been injured or killed because they didn't have the ROPS up, so it's a very good idea to keep that up. One more thing I forgot to mention, this does not come with the Kubota BX. This is a mounting system for my sunshade. So now very quickly, let's just go over this whole tractor. I'm gonna show you all the knobs and buttons and tell you what they do. Let's start with the dash. Ignore this button because this is the button that turns on my work lights. So speaking of lights, here's your turret signal, right and left. This is your hazard lights. This is your headlights, which are pretty much worthless. We'll talk about that later. Your cluster is gonna show your fuel level, your RPMs, this space here will show the amount of hours and your engine temperature. This lever here is your cruise control. That's right, the Kubota BX has cruise control. So as you're driving, you simply push this lever down and then release your pedal and it will stay in that position and keep moving. When you want to stop, you just either hit the brake or hit the pedal again and that will pop back up. This arm right here is your throttle. Going this way increases your RPMs, going this way decreases your RPMs. And of course, this is your ignition. Now, there are four positions to this ignition. You have, of course, off or stop. Turn it one spot, and it turns all your electrical on. Turn it one more spot, and this is very important, and it heats up your glow plugs. When you turn it to that position, you'll see this illuminate. That is your glow plug indicator light. That tells you that you are heating your glow plugs. 
So now what the heck's a glow plug? Well, with a diesel engine, they use glow plugs basically to heat things up so it makes it easier to start. That's all I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna get into all the crazy nuances of it. It heats up stuff around your fuel and your spark plugs to get things going. So when it's really cold outside, you wanna turn it to that position and hold it for five, 10 seconds. If it's really cold, like freezing or below, if it's a normal day, summertime, I still, you know, I still, I just out of habit, I, I turn them on and uh, let it heat up just a little bit and then start it. So, glow plugs. And then the final position, of course. So that's about it for the dash. Let's go down to the floorboards. Okay, over here on the left-hand side, that's your brake. And on the right-hand side of your floorboard, you've got what's called a treadle pedal. That's right, it's called a treadle pedal. Well, basically, forward is forward, and the back is reverse. And in the center right, there is a parking brake. Let me show you how that works. The parking brake is a button, very similar to the cruise control button. It just goes up and down unless you push the brake first. Push the brake first, then push the button down, then release the brake and it's in park. The brake stays on. Now, if you wanna release it, just hit the brake again. Okay, finally, underneath the seat are three controls that probably confuse people the most. This controls the rate at which your three-point hitch and your mower deck will lower. So when you tighten this, it will slow down how fast your three-point hitch will lower. And if you loosen it, it will increase the speed at which it will drop. And that's right, I said drop, because with your three-point hitch, there's no downward force other than the weight of the implement. That's right, there's no hydraulic push, like with your loader, that forces the implement down. It's only gravity activated. So when you release your three-point hitch to lower it, it's the weight of the implement and that knob that determine how fast it drops. Next down here, you have your height adjustment for your mower deck. So this operates very simply. You have to raise your three-point hitch and your mower deck all the way until it stops going up. Then you can turn this knob and the zero through four represent inches, zero inches to four inches for mowing. And then when you lower your mower deck, whatever you have this set to, will determine how far your mower deck lowers so you can mow at a consistent height. Finally over here is the coup de grace of controls. This is your rear differential lock. So when you depress this, a pin goes into the gearbox, the rear gearbox, and it locks the differential for your rear wheels. Now I wanna warn you, if you depress this while you are running fast, while the, the tires are moving fast, it will shear that pin and you're gonna be in for a mess because that pin will be inside the gearbox and you're gonna to have to take a trip to the dealership to get it fixed. So the way you wanna operate this is if you're stuck and you need to lock your rear differential, very carefully and gently start to depress this and then start to engage your rear tires by accelerating forward or back very slowly until that pin goes into place and then it will lock that gearbox so your rear differential is locked and it'll help you get out of sticky situations. Over here on the right hand side of the seat is where all the fun controls are. Right here of course is your loader control. This is your three point and mower deck raise and lower. It is spring-loaded, goes back to the center. Pushing it down makes it go down. Pulling it back makes it go up. This lever here selects your high and low and neutral gear. The rabbit is high gear, the middle is neutral, and the turtle is low gear. Right next to it is your two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive select. When this little picture here where it's where it's broken in the middle, when it's in that position, that's two wheel drive. This little picture here where it's all connected together is four wheel drive. 
And this lever here, which nobody seems to know what it does, really just basically locks out your loader control. So in the unlock position, you can move your loader control. And when you slide this forward and over, a pin goes in underneath the loader arm and makes it impossible to move it. So that's pretty much all it does. And finally, on this side of the tractor is just your fuel cap. This is where you add your diesel. Moving to the left side of the tractor, you've got a cup holder and a tiny little storage here with a 12 volt plug in it. And uh, over here, you've got your PTO controls. Now, PTO controls consist of a rear PTO select, rear and mid PTO, and then finally back here is mid PTO only for when you're mowing. Finally, this lever right here engages and disengages your PTO. PTO stands for power takeoff. And since we're talking about PTOs, let's go back to the back of the tractor. We're gonna talk about this right here, which is your rear PTO. And we're gonna talk about this mess here, which is your three-point hitch. Okay, here's a good close look at your rear PTO, okay? It's covered by a plastic cap that you just squeeze the top and bottom, wiggle it, and pull it off. And that is where you connect your rear PTO. Now, every PTO works pretty much the same. You have some kind of either a button or a sleeve that you engage, either pull the sleeve back or push the button in and it will slide on and then it will click into a groove back here. And that's how you know your PTO is fully connected. Now, of course, there's a lot more involved with PTOs and safety and all kinds of things, how they work, but this is basic. So I'm just telling you where things are and what they do. The power takeoff is how you power something like a rototiller or a rotary cutter or a flail mower or any type of PTO engaged implement that will hook to your rear three point hitch. Now, the rear three point hitch, probably the best feature on a tractor. A tractor actually was designed to pull things and to run implements off the back. The loader is really a second, it's a bonus, okay? Yes, the loader is what you're gonna use a lot on this tractor, but the way tractors were designed for farming and whatever, the three-point hitch is the most important part. So on this, oh, and I should mention, okay, there's more stuff that I added to this tractor that doesn't come factory. These telescoping stabilizer bars, okay? Those I added, I got those from Messix, and this is called a Pat's Easy Change. So um, I added this because it makes it a lot easier to hook up implements, and uh, it, it's a good purchase. But otherwise, you're gonna come with just a basic three-point where there'll be two holes at the ends, and you, you stick those over the, the lower pins, and then this top linkage, this right here, a lot of people don't know what this does. This helps to hold your upper arm out of the way. You pull it forward like that, see how I'm pulling it up like that, and it goes down, and then you, the arm will move, and when you wanna hold it up out of the way, you just push it up and then push it back, and it holds it right there. So once you have a three-point implement hooked up to your tractor, that lever that I showed you before on the right-hand side of the seat will raise and lower your three-point hitch, and that will raise and lower that implement. That also, at the same time, will raise and lower your mower deck. So when you have something like a box blade, a, a land plane, a rear blade, all kinds of different attachments, this will raise and lower that to drag it when you need to drag it and then to get it up off the ground when it needs to come up. So that's pretty much the basic functions and features of the Kubota BX. Now next video, we're gonna go into pretty good detail about the loader functions, how to operate the loader, how to take it off and put it back on, and how to take the mower deck off and put it back on way easier than what the manufacturer tells you. Okay, now let's talk about that first implement you should buy, and maybe you should even have it before you take possession of your tractor. Rear ballast. This is what's called a ballast box, okay? It was bought from Titan Attachments, which I don't think, I don't know if they're in business anymore or it's a different company, I don't know. Anyway, you can buy these ballast boxes from several different companies. This one has been modified greatly, okay? I have another video showing how to get the most out of your Titan ballast box. That's the title of the video, look it up, you'd be it's good to watch, okay? I can do so many things with this ballast box. I have a compartment in the middle for putting chains and ropes and tools and stuff. I have these two baskets screwed to the side to put lightweight tools and gloves and 
you know, rags, whatever. Uh, it's so handy. I even put a shelf on the back of it so I can work off of it, okay? Rear ballast is more important than just all the functionality that I made for this. The main reason you have rear ballast is so you can get the most out of your front end loader. If you're not using three to 500 pounds of ballast beyond the rear wheels on the back three point hitch of your tractor, then you're working, you're, you're playing with fire. More accidents happen and more tractors tip over because there isn't enough rear ballast on the tractor and the front end tips forward, the front axle is a pivoting axle and the tractor can roll. I say this from experience because when I bought my tractor, I had no idea about ballast and they didn't tell me anything about it and I almost rolled my brand new tractor. So rear ballast is very, very important. Whether it's a heavy hitch or a ballast box, what have you, even weight in your rear tires is better than nothing. But a ballast box beyond the three point, on the three point hitch, beyond the rear wheels, creating a fulcrum is what you want to do. So I can't emphasize that enough. Get a ballast box and don't operate your tractor with your front end loader without proper ballast on the back of your tractor. Anyway, that's going to be it for this video. I hope you liked it. I hope I'm helping somebody out there. Like I say, our next video is going to be all about that front end loader and the mower deck. And uh, I hope this series is really, really going to help people. That's, that's why I created this channel. And if you like it, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and I will see you next time when I'm doing more stuff.